People can say what they want, but we just keep doing the work. You just keep repeating and, and envisioning that and helping the team to see that. You know, you can get through almost anything. Beyond Meat and its CEO, Ethan Brown, burst onto the scene with a sizzling IPO at the NASDAQ on May 2nd, 2019. The company's market valuation quickly surpassed $14 billion, as seemingly everyone was excited about the future of plant-based meat. There were deals with Target, Dunkin' Donuts, you name it, everyone wanted a piece of Beyond Meat. Every reason that we started this company and every reason that the consumers are reaching for our products strengthens every single day. It's hard not to be passionate about it because you can help so many people. We know that people love animal protein, right? And so we can create that directly from plants in a way that eliminates the animal. Get the taste exactly right. Make sure that people understand the health benefits. And the third is get the price to the point where it is at parity or below that of animal protein. This transition will occur and it'll start to occur more quickly. Brown's vision was dealt a serious setback during the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, Yamit's stock price took a big hit. We expected there'd be pushback. But just seeing it happen and being on the receiving end of it uh, has been eye-opening. Despite everything that has gone on with the company, how have you stayed centered? I appreciate that question. Um, one, I have a great core team of people around me. We're trying to do something that is not going to happen overnight, um, that has fits and starts. We're going to, going to make this thing uh, into the, the long-term success that we've been after. I would be dishonest if I said it hasn't been difficult. You know, there have been challenges, um, but there's been more reward than there have been challenges. There's been more opportunity to impact change uh, than not. Um, and, you know, if you look at this from a historical perspective, you should expect this. Why is it so hard to change consumer mindsets? I think this is something that unlike, let's say, shifting from the fax machine to, to, to digital communication to, to, you know, the landline to the mobile phone, we're not trying to change something that has just been around for a couple hundred years. Now, the, the way to think about it, in my mind, though, is to, to not change it, is to simply change the material, right? So provide the consumer with that delicious whole muscle steak, provide the consumer with a burger, provide the consumer with sausage, and it's just a different source of the protein. That's it. How have you dealt with some of those challenges from your perspective as a leader, not just as a CEO, as the founder? I think it gets back to who you surround yourself with um, and you know, whether it's my team here uh, or my board. My board has been incredibly supportive of this effort. They, they have a, they're seasoned enough to have a long-term view. I think the other piece is, you know, organizationally, I've gotten to, to, to really embrace the horizontal flow of value through an organization. You know, if you think about the way we've set up businesses and we think of organizations in general, it's always vertical. We've got the sales, marketing, operations, finance team, et cetera. But that's not the way value flows. The value flows from product ideation all the way through to the consumer. So it's really horizontal. And so from a leadership perspective, it's really how do you teach people to think about the team as one single team and not as a department? This is really the lean style of management and it's, it's the lean management principles. And that is really the right way to run a business. In 2021, Beyond Meat opened a sprawling 288,000 square foot headquarters in a former aircraft hangar in El Segundo, California. The location is outfitted with a state-of-the-art test kitchen that may foster the next big thing in plant-based food. Ethan, this stuff looks really good. I watched it being cooked. It grills like steak. I love this product. And it really starts with what we are talking about earlier about at the farmer level. So this is made from fava beans, which are being grown in North Dakota. Fava beans fix nitrogen back into the soil. So the farmer's able to use less fertilizer, which means they're able to make more money uh, with each acre, right? So there's no animal in this entire process. Is your mindset still, and I, I think we talked about this in the past, to fail fast and fail often? Oh, absolutely. So our program, our, our innovation program, the Beyond Meat Rapid and Relentless Innovation Program, that's at the center of it is that we're going to move more quickly than anybody else and we're going to fail and recover more quickly, right? And I think one of the challenges that particularly young people have is they're being dealt perhaps their first failure, right? And so many of the people that work here are coming out of really great academic backgrounds. And so it takes them a moment to realize that, you know, not delivering on something is not the end of the world as long as they get back up and fix. Right? And so we have to figure out how to get people comfortable with quick iteration, quick failure, and then quick recovery. 
And so it's a big part of our culture. So Ethan, as someone dealing with these big leadership challenges, you know, tell us about your style. How do you rally the troops and how do you get out the message that you're trying to change a category that is well established? It's, it's meat. You're yep. going up against big meat. Yeah, we talk about this every day. I mean, first and foremost, it's the true north. Like, and that's what most leaders will, will have the team focus on. And, and so if we stay true to that true north, uh, which in our case is to provide a plant-based meat that is indistinguishable from animal protein, do that at a price that everyone can pay, uh, you know, you just keep repeating and, and envisioning that and helping the team to see that, uh, you know, you can get through almost anything. So, Ethan, you see this, this upstart industry, lab-grown meat, it, it's out there, it's taking form. As a founder and a leader who have a company that does it differently, does that change how you lead beyond me? The moment you walk in this building, you should feel a sense of urgency. Whether or not it's, it's in vitro meat or some other technology, you know, you're always going to be acting with a sense of urgency. In fact, I have... This one well, I wanted to ask yeah. you about yeah. that. You know, what, it says somewhere someone is working harder on your idea than you are. Does that still power you today? It just summed it up for me. Because whether you're an athlete or a professional, you know, there's always somebody that's working really hard. And so you just have that competitive mindset that if it doesn't motivate you enough to just bring this goodness to the world, you know, competition can also motivate you. Is it tough to turn it off? Yeah. When, you, when, you, when your work is your mission, <laughs> it's almost impossible. And Brad, as part of this, uh, this interview, I, I got to spend uh, really the whole day with Ethan and his team in their new headquarters out in El Segundo, which is interesting, right across from uh, the, the street from uh, Mattel's headquarters. But nonetheless, uh, I've known Ethan for about five years, and I didn't get the sense that he was uh, deterred uh, by his mission to change the, the meat industry. Of course, there's Ethan Brown right, uh, right there uh, on the screen. I think he remains laser focused on bringing more innovative products to market, remains laser focused on getting more deals with the likes of McDonald's, some of the fast food players, and then laser focused on getting the prices of his products down to a point where consumers don't have to necessarily grab for a cheaper alternative in, in meat. Uh, to me, he seems like the same guy I met him. Now, is he happy with how the stock price is fair? Well, of course not. This is a company that burst onto the radar screen May 5th, 2019 with its IPO over, the, over at the NASDAQ. The IPO price was $25. The first trade for Beyond Meat was 46 and then it surged to $65.75 a share uh, by the close of trading. Uh, uh, that's 163% gain. So the stock has fallen way back. The results have not been where they, uh, where they should be. Uh, consumers have questioned the, the health of Beyond Meat products and then, of course, questioned the health of Impossible Foods. It's not just a Beyond Meat thing. So I think for next year, now that they have reset the cost structure, they have had two rounds of pretty big, sizable layoffs. They have reset the cost structure. Uh, they've brought the price, pro price points down on these products. Is 2024 the year where the top line stabilizes, the bottom lines, uh, the cost structure's in a better shape, and then you finally start to get some better results from Beyond Meat. I think that's what a lot of bulls in this story are hoping for. Yeah, it comes back to a few things, and you mentioned many of them kind of linking about the consumer, where that perhaps appetite needs to change more notably. I mean, you still have a consumer environment. One of the things that's gonna be an overhang for Beyond Meat is just how much people are actually eating. We've talked about, of course, the company of the year this year for Yahoo Finance, Nova Nordisk, and you think about some of the underlying stories that have really prompted so much attention towards the healthcare space. It's really been the weight loss drugs at this point in time. And so if you have less of a portion of people that are eating out there or people who are eating far less, that impacts directly a company like Beyond Meat and the potential orders that they can see both on the wholesale side as well as into some of the restauranters that they also have partnerships with. So two-pronged business where you think about the retail but also on the food service side. And then additionally, the scaling that they've had to do over that point in time too. This is a company that used to have so much of their production in different factories or different operational facilities that they did not own, they decided to pivot, they decided to make sure that they could grow those out themselves, break ground and be able to hold on to more of that production capacity and make it something that was just their own entity where they weren't leasing space, but they owned the space. And so that was a strategic decision. This is also a, just a story, I think, of needing cash and having to tap the market for more of that. And that's where you've seen some of the share price impacts, most notably over that long-term chart, is because they had to go back to the market and do at the market equity offerings as well. And so the listing of additional shares, that's what impacted them back in 2019. That continued to impact them later on because of the dilution that took place. Yeah, and I'll just add, I, I just I think Ethan has been very consistent when we have talked in the past that he he needs and he wants to get the price points of these products 
down and he has to continue to do that and in order to do that you just have to make more of them because the demand is there so he has to get those price points down where this becomes more of a mass market option where that family of four that remains uh, that is on a very tight budget reaches for beyond meat products whether it's meatballs sausage or hamburgers whatever it is reach for this instead of a four or six pack of, of traditional meat products all right well we'll see and great conversation there with Ethan.